Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and this is going to be a quick rundown of what I believe are the best beginner telescopes on the market right now. Now if you're watching this video there's a good chance you've seen some of my other videos and basically a couple of years ago when I first got into astronomy as I bought various telescopes I gave reviews of them after I'd been using them for a while and well the biggest question I've had on all of my astronomy videos is always what's the best beginner telescope? And now, finally, I'm getting around to answering that question. And, well, we'll have a look back at some of the old uh, footage, as unfortunately I can't just buy telescopes indefinitely without selling them off to finance new ones, such as my current telescope here. This is the uh, Skywatcher Heritage 130p Dobsonian Telescope. And that's not the one I'm going to recommend as the best. And I'll tell you why in just a second. But first of all, I suppose I'll give you a quick rundown of my old uh, favourite telescopes. Well, as I don't have all these old telescopes to hand, I thought rather handily I can just point the camera at my old videos on YouTube. So, very quickly, this is the Celestron Fairscope, and this was my first telescope, and it is marketed really as the ultimate sort of beginner telescope. And it's got to be said, I did have a lot of enjoyment out of it. But ultimately, I don't think it's the best beginner scope at all, because it's even though it's small and portable and all that, because it's on a Dobsonian mount there, rather than a normal tripod, if you're not uh, on a windowsill or a table, then it obviously sits very low to the ground, which is not ideal at all to be trying to look through at stuff in the sky. And similarly, because it's a reflector telescope, rather than what you sort of traditional, traditionally see as like the old-fashioned brass and wooden telescopes, um, it means that when you look through, if you haven't got an adapter for the eyepiece, everything is back to front and upside down. Which, once again, for a telescope that's aimed at beginners, I don't think that that's an ideal situation. And it's sort of a confusing introduction to astronomy, really. What I've got on the table in front of me there is a pair of Celestron Skymaster astronomy binoculars. And those are 20 magnification and the objective lenses, which are the big side, um, as you can see there, are 80 millimetres. So they gather more light and in theory show you a few more stars than the first scope, but you're stuck at the 20 times magnification. And those are fantastic. I mean, those are really good quality and those I really did enjoy using for a long, long time. And ultimately, it was just the fact that the uh, binoculars alone weighed two kilograms just over. And so that obviously meant you then needed a tripod to put them on because there's no way you could hold those still. And then obviously if you had a tripod on, that's probably going to be another kilogram near enough. So it ended up that when I was trying to take them off up out of the light pollution of the town, I was carrying a good three kilograms on me back, which certainly wasn't an ideal situation. Um, but those, I definitely really do enjoy it. I certainly wouldn't say they're for beginners because they're far more expensive than the general beginner telescopes as well. Now this, I believe, is the beginner telescope of beginner telescopes. It's the Celestron Travelscope 70. And, well, as you can see, it's sort of more traditionally what you think of as a telescope. Um, and, well, I mean, just look at it, first of all. It's a proper fantastic looking piece of kit. It's very lightweight. You can see that it's extremely small and portable, yet at the same time it's still got a 70mm objective lens. So it in theory shows you slightly fewer stars than the Celestron first scope, but that ultimately doesn't matter when you're dealing with this sort of um, size range. And, well, you can see there it comes with its own tripod, and the tripod's a bit flimsy, it's got to be said, but it's also extremely lightweight. So that entire package there is less than what the binoculars that you've just seen alone weigh. And the fact that this is a refractor telescope means that everything that you see is the right way up and not the reflector way where it's upside down and back to front. So this makes it ideal for nighttime viewing and the general sort of getting used to astronomy because obviously whatever you look at is how it appears rather than when you look at the moon through a reflector you're seeing the moon upside down and back to front, which if you're a beginner, like you say, I don't think it's ideal and certainly not what I'd have personally chosen to have as marketed as the beginner telescope in the first scope. Whereas this one, I mean, just look at that. It looks perfect. It looks like a proper telescope and it really is great. And with the fact that you can see things the right way up through it, 
It also makes it excellent for just general daytime viewing. As some of you may know, I moved on to a narrowboat last year, which once I had the ability to go up and down the canal and moor up in the middle of nowhere away from all the lights and general light pollution of the towns, I suddenly didn't have to have a very portable lightweight telescope to be able to cart off a couple of miles on me back and could literally step, well, literally off the boat onto the towpath with a nice big telescope such as the Skywatcher Heritage here. And, well, that obviously meant suddenly I was able to have a bigger telescope, as you can see, with a much wider aperture there. So I can see a lot more stars through this, and it's a fantastic scope. And the fact that it's uh, collapsible as well means that it is still very small considering the size of the telescope. It's a 130mm aperture, which is hardly like the biggest, as I'm sure you're aware, but it doesn't particularly matter to me because it's the port, it's um, the general ability to store it on a very small boat, basically, which is one of its key selling points to me. And obviously, even with it being such a small folding up thing, it's still got all of that 130mm to collect light. So this suddenly being able to step two steps away from the boat and be in perfect skies, it's just absolutely fantastic. And I really can't praise this enough for its, well, the collapsing is just a handy extra feature. And it is a great quality telescope for the sort of 130 pound-ish region. Um, but the reason I wouldn't personally say this is the best telescope for beginners is obviously if you're in the middle of town, then, and you want to be taking it out, it's obviously a lot more awkward to carry, even with the little carry handle it's got on the base. But more importantly, this is a reflector telescope, just like the Celestron First Scope, which unfortunately, I think it's very off-putting personally to a beginner, that that means, unless you have an adapter on the eyepiece, everything you look and see through the eyepiece is upside down and back to front. So that, like I say, with the First Scope as well, is sort of where it, I don't know, just getting into astronomy and being able to simply line things up when you might not be particularly like, super interested like I've been over the last couple of years. And um, well, it's just much easier with something like the Travel Scope 70. And like I say, the Travel Scope 70 is even including the tripod, which is pretty flimsy, um, is a, still a lighter weight package than something like the uh, Skymaster binoculars that I had. So ultimately, as much as I love this telescope, and for my situation now being able to be in perfect dark sky areas, it is fantastic. I can't fault it or praise it enough. But ultimately, absolute beginner, the Travel Scope 70 is just fantastic. You look through it, everything's the right way up, and it's just, oh, it's just a great little telescope. I mean, I really do love it. And it's the telescope that even now having this, I've still used the travel scope more than any other telescope or pair of binoculars that I've ever had. So it's been a very quick look at the best telescopes, in my opinion, on the market for beginners. i definitely say go for the travel scope 70. It's just a fantastic all-round package and nice and portable. Uh, the first scope's great and it's that very similar, very small, lightweight. But the fact that it's a reflector and everything's upside down and back to front, I don't think that's perfect for beginners. And it's certainly, without a tripod, definitely not a great sort of introduction. It's good if you're looking through your window, if you've got nice light pollution free skies. But ultimately, Travel Scope 70, Celestron First Scope. I'd put the Astronomy Binoculars lower down because they're not ideal, because obviously you can't change the magnification and they're still very, very heavy indeed. And well, if you're happy and pleased with the way your astronomy's going, then I'd say move on to something bigger like this maybe one of the um, Astro Master series, but ultimately, Travel Scope 70. Thank you very much for watching, subscribe, check out my other astronomy videos, and well, make sure you like the Facebook page. Until the next time, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around soon. Farewell.